Gambesons. I'm O2 with the Crusaders. These are my fellow Crusaders. We've got John, Kendra, hey. and we're going to explain to you how we use Gambesons in the ACW. Now, first of all, we're going to talk about what is a Gambeson. What's a Gambeson? Yeah, absolutely. So a Gambeson is the base layer that goes under your armor because armor is metal and it hurts when you just wear it by yourself by itself. It'll kind of rub into you. Also, while the armor distributes the force of a blow, it doesn't absorb it. And that's the Gambeson's job. So these are the cloth base, puffy, pillowy layers that go underneath your armor. Very different, a couple different centuries here, John. Um, do you want to quickly go over just basic history of Gambeson's? Oh uh, gosh, they go back all the way back to when people were wearing just chain and rather than a uh, linen outer core, or sorry, a linen, with uh, uh, a raw wool core, they were just up to 27 layers of raw linen. And that would actually be enough to stop a 140 pound draw on an English war bow. Which is pretty impressive, really. Yeah. But as armor continued to evolve, they realized, well, the steel is gonna stop most everything that comes my direction. All I really need is something to add some cushioning. That's when you start seeing these thicker, but wholly only two or three layered linen gambesons. And as things began to evolve and steel got even better, they started placing the padding only in certain spots. So for example, over the yoke, around the deltoid, a little bit out to the elbow. And then as it evolved even further, as you see with this example, 17th century, uh, they started using fancier materials like silk. <clears throat> the silk really helps the armor flow. It's really quite impressive. It is rather expensive though. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> so where would I get a gambeson just stepping into the sport? There's several options. Um, one of our personal favorites on the team, we'll link it below. Um, but I know this one over here is a Steel Mastery. We like Steel Mastery for going just to buy a Gambeson online. That's probably our favorite online source. Um, John, do you have other sources you're like? I, I love Gambeson.pl. Um, we'll link that below too. They're very busy because they're very popular, and there's a reason for that. Their quality is exceptional and their prices are reasonable, so you might have to send them more than one email, but they will get back to you. They made me this one and this one, both of which are completely hand-stitched masterpieces. Yeah, there's these are really, they've lasted quite well too, I think. And if you want something like this, this was made for me by a tailor. So you'd have to find a tailor with a lot of time on their hands and a very powerful sewing machine. <laughs> yes. So does it matter? what country or what style um, you get your gambeson? Kendra? Um, yes, general, well, yes, in a general sense. It's not as important to say a helmet matching the rest of your armor, but it is important that your gambeson works for your armor type. Most Western European gambesons are going to be fairly similar, basically what you see right here in front of you. Um, but I'll, have, I'll let John explain more the difference between, say, this gambeson and this gambeson for the armor types. But over behind O2 here, we do have an Eastern Gambeson. It goes clear down to like knee length, maybe a bit lower. There you go. Because the lamellar and the skirting on the Eastern kits are a lot lower. So you need to consider. <laughs> <laughs> I realized after I picked it up that it's not going that long. It's good. It's good. It's um, But yeah, so there is. So there are these general, like, don't wear an Eastern Gambeson with a Western European kit. You'll look weird people look at you funny. Um, but generally speaking, most Western European gambesons are going to look the same. But John, you know more about the difference between these two than I would. Well, this, this is the evolutionary zenith of what this one started out as. This one's padded all over. It's really good if you're wearing a lot of chains, really good if you're wearing some brigadine. How that heavy likes is to, it? It's far too heavy. It's great <laughs> for training. Like if you want to okay. train, it works great. It's 100% period accurate, including armpits that are unusually low that limit range of motion. Uh, this one, while it is also period, it's a little later, and the padding, because it's designed to work... You can pick these up, okay. too. I mean, it's not... So, like, this is super answer. light, and it's yes. super light because the padding is only over the yoke and out to the deltoid and out to the elbow, 
and everywhere else it's essentially just like a linen shirt. So it weighs maybe a pound and a half. It's been optimized for not only my style of armor, which is uh, German Gothic, but also my sport because it's padded along the collarbones and areas where I tend to take a lot of hits. So this would not be good for like a whiskey kid. Oh gosh, no. Okay. no, no, no. This, however, absolutely would. It is padded everywhere you need and it even extends a little lower for some of those lower uh, hip shots that people will try to paint you out of. Uh, some people even joked and called this the padded room. It is 11 pounds. It's heavy. Um, I train in it uh, because it does add so much weight, but I have never felt a single shot while wearing it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, no, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. I'm noticing that there's a lot of holes, and this um, gambeson does not have any straps. However, this one has a whole bunch of straps on it. Well, what I took the holes and straps. <laughs> well, I took the, the straps out. I don't remember why I did that, probably because I haven't fought in this in a while. As far as the holes are concerned, this is the way they would attach armor to their body. Um, and in some kits, this is far more important, especially if you're going to do things like floating shoulders and floating elbows. Guys, if you're into duels, if you want an extra amount of mobility, you're going to want floating shoulders, floating elbows. And to hold them onto your body, you need these little holes called arming points, or they won't stay properly. You'll see a lot of people fighting and their armor slaps around and slaps them and even bites them. It's because they don't have either not well. properly placed arming holes or they don't have any at all and they've tried to attach it. Other reasons. We don't give people back in the day enough credit. There's a reason they did things the way they did. These holes work exceptionally well. Okay, so as we can see here, this one, this gambeson has open armpits where Neither of these two do have open armpits. Both of them have closed armpits. So let's talk about open armpits and what are the benefits, drawbacks? Yeah. I mean, you have arm movement in the open armpits, which is nice and heat release. Well, let's hear but, from you. you. Yeah, I want to hear what you have. What do you have? So I have closed armpits. Okay. Um, I have never used an open armpit, so I'm not really familiar with some of the benefits of it. Um, I don't have any problems with my gambeson. As far as I know. Now, maybe if I used some open armpits, then I'd be able to see some of the benefits. So, both of these are closed armpits, but one is a little more advanced than the other. This is a historically period one, so it actually does limit my movement quite a bit, um, which is one of the reasons I don't wear it anymore. This one has a grommet install, this little open space. And that allows it to mimic all the movement you'll get from an open armpit, but still give you some protection. Now, having an open armpit does give you some uh, heat advantages if you need to cool down between duels, bouts, and so on. I personally just went out and bought one of those uh, cool suits that you soak with water, and as it evaporates, it keeps you cool because my armor was so hot. Um, I prefer the closed. I don't like getting armpitted. So the question has been posed if you have a really broad shoulders and a really, really broad chest. Um, COVID has made me a little soft, so I won't claim that I'm either one of those things at the moment, but there was a time where that could be considered. Um, this one's been custom made. It's a little more expensive, and as you can see, there is absolutely no impingement up and around, and there's also no impingement coming forward. None. But then again, I spent the extra money on the custom one with the extra pocket and the elbow to give me that stretch. And another thing you can do is if you're still really concerned, open armpits will definitely help mitigate. Offer also layers. How many layers should they have? Um, that's a good Some question. Definite. I have two layers on mine. Two layers, two layers. Oh, no, no, actually uh, only uh, one layer and a liner. Okay. So technically three all together. But it really depends on your armor type. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I would not recommend this again for a wispy kit. No. This is more looking for. I wouldn't recommend that for a brigadine either no. because brigadine you have all the uh, bending plates on your ribs. This has no padding on your ribs. None. At all. This is just like clothes. Like you might as well wear a t-shirt underneath. It Very only has padding up and around the yoke. So full plate, one single, like your surgical night shining armor, like cuirass is what you're looking at for something like that. Which is what John wears. Yeah. Full, baby full plate. <laughs> These two are also two layers. Two layers is pretty standard. Three is a bit overkill, but if you really want to be safe, I guess you could. If you're going to be a tank and you just going to grab people and throw them around and, and get beat on, maybe go a little thicker, but unless you're going to highly specialize, three is a bit overkill. Yeah. If you're going to go and order a gambeson, make sure it's linen. 
Linen is we'll such in. a fantastic material. Yeah. Um, we're going to go into that then. Okay, excellent. Because that's our next thing that we're going to go over is materials. Because it does matter what your materials are. I know amazing. All right, so materials are super important. We're going to start with the outer layer. Um, so we have linen, which is my personal favorite, cotton, and wool. If you want to save money, cotton exterior, not cotton interior, but cotton exterior, if you want to save money. Honestly, though, I, I think the linen is worth it. It's a lot tougher. It's a lot stronger. It washes better. So cotton has an issue because they're both plants where cotton will absorb water, but it doesn't expel the water where the linen will absorb the water, but also expel it. So you're going to stay a lot cooler. Wool is just a lot of work. You can do it in wool. I know the fancy one we have over on the side here is has wool interior. Personally, I think it's a lot of money and linen is a better material to go with. So I would always recommend a linen exterior. You go ahead. If go. you are a glutton for punishment and you're gonna make this yourself, make sure it's an upholstery grade linen. Upholstery grade linen is a little tougher than this. Yeah. Um, I mean, you basically get a heavyweight linen. I can link where I like to get my heavyweight linen below. Um, this is a midweight linen, but heavyweight linens and canvas linens are the way to go for gambesons. I personally try to avoid cotton because it does turn full of bacteria so quickly. I mean, if you want the stink of your gambeson to form part of the matrix that holds yes. it together, go with cotton. Linen is also natu naturally antimicrobial. Wool is as well, it's just harder to deal with, but linen's also antimicrobial. So it's kind of like the best of both worlds. It's super tough, it's easy to care for, but it's got all the benefits of wool, being antimicrobial as well. So those are the main fabrics. Again, if you want to save money, cotton exterior, but you can also do a cotton interior. I do not recommend cotton interior because it don't. smells. Just it don't. will stink after about six months. It's not gonna, it, and you can't get rid of this. Like smell. a thousand corpses retching. Just don't do it. Don't. However, if you are gonna go with a good batting, bamboo, there's a, yes. it, not only is it highly antimicrobial, so really resists rot, um, but the, comp so when people get injured, it's not from a heavy hit compressing it, it's from repeated hits, and the second hit hits when it's still expanding. Bamboo expands very quickly, which is why a lot of professional uh, motorcycle helmet manufacturers still use a layer of bamboo batting in their protection. It's a yes. very effective batting. Personally, I went with wool for its wicking potential. Yes, which um, we have My here. armor is uh, completely black and the invisibility of it likes to cook me in the summer. And so any the extra masochist. cooling uh, potential I decided to, was more worth the extra uh, padding and protection that the bamboo would offer. Bamboo's great. Bamboo breathes better. It's antimicrobial. It's also more washable, although we'll go into washing gamisons later because I just recommend not. Wool, again, I would not recommend cotton. Wool or bamboo is the way to go. Save your money on the exterior if you need to, but wool or bamboo. Wool also has some good compression. It's got good wicking. It's antimicrobial, so your gamisons not going to stink near as much as if you do cotton batting. Cotton works. I mean, lots of people do it, but honestly, you're gonna spend a lot of money on gamson either way. Do bamboo or wool and just save yourself some energy there. But we don't recommend polyester or synthetic materials. Reason being, polyester is made out of plastic, which is ultimately made out of oil. The oils from your skin will actually bond with the polyester and you will not be able to get the smell out. It does not breathe because it's plastic. It will cook you. It will cook you. It doesn't last it as sucks. long. It sucks. Um, another big thing, always, 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 always buy your gambeson first because you take the measurements for your armor over your gambeson and always talk to your chapter president about any of that kind of stuff. They know best. You know, we're noticing here that the, obviously these are two very different linens. You can see a lot of holes in this one and this one's a lot heavier. Um, obviously there are different qualities of linen, John. Do you want to go into that more? Um, yeah, you have a, a canvas grade linen that you'd make like a tent or something out of and it has roughly the same amount of time and life as this one has had and as you can see the wear difference is, well, quite substantial. Um, in addition to that is uh, also the, the quality, one of the reasons why I love gambeson.pl is they even put in this extra thin layer um, to help with breathing and then in addition to that you can actually see the two little points where it's worn they still bothered to put in an additional heavy layer of linen. So this thing is one, two, three layers of linen thick and 100% hand quilted. I um, will say this, I have made several gambesons myself. 
I do not recommend making them unless you are very experienced and have a very heavy duty machine. It's a lot of work. It's very complicated. I've met people who sew like corsets and wedding dresses that won't do it. So it's not, so if you've never, if you're new to sewing and stuff, I would not recommend making your own gambeson. It's an expensive mistake a lot of times, but go ahead. Well, speaking of gambesons, um, while doing some research into um, medieval times and, and, and uh, the, the Crusades, I found that the Knights Templar actually cleaned their gambesons with a combination of a couple of different essential oils, for example, um, clove and, uh, oh, you don't have it, it says frankincense. Oh, <clears throat> frankincense and clove, a little bit of orange. Uh, what's great about these is if you spray down your gambeson with those three essential oils in a solution of, I personally like to use like a spiced rum that's on sale because um, the smell. Yeah. Um, and you can throw in a little um, grain alcohol if you want to up the, the proof is it kills all the bacteria. And the smell that is left, like I have, I have sweat in this thing. It smells like Christmas, I love it, Christmas. It's, that's what this smells like and I promise you, this has had every inch of my body sweat on it and it isn't horrible to behold. <clears throat> that's actually really good that you bring all this up because my next question was going to be, how do you clean your gambeson? Because you fight in it, you sweat in it, you bleed in it. And obviously your gambeson is what's going to hold most of those liquids coming out of your body. So here's the thing. I've never actually washed any of my gambesons because every single time I spray them down. And as an added bonus, these are also anti-inflammatories. So as you fight and exert yourself, they help uh, with the second day of fighting, you're not a sore. Yeah. So you only spray it, you don't wash it. Never had to wash it, not once. I don't recommend washing, especially if you have any wool in there, wool shrinks, especially if it's padding, you can't, so if wool shrinks on a sweater, you can actually stretch it back out. You cannot do that with padding. I've seen a lot of gambesons ruined by people trying to wash them. I highly, highly discourage it, but if you say have chunks of dirt on your gambeson, soak it in a bathtub in cold water, pull it out, roll it up in a towel as flat as possible. But I highly recommend just doing exactly what John said, spray it down with a lovely spice drum Christmas smelling spray, and I've never, I've never washed a gambeson because of that. So probably not um, in the laundry? No, no, laundry? no, you will hate your life. You'll have a gambeson for a four-year-old. <laughs> okay, so it'll shrink. Yes, okay. very it much. It can so. displace the padding. I mean, you can't have them dry cleaned, but that will cost a lot of money. And yeah. it's still, believe it or not, the dry cleaning process is very hard on the fibers, and you'll age it a yes. couple of years. So, I mean, if you've ever stuck like a blanket or a pillow in the wash, like that clumped up padding that you get, and that's what will happen to your gambeson as well. It's just don't ever, ever. Please. The spray works don't really well. Uh, they did it back in the day. I've been very happy. John's the one who shared that recipe with us, and we've been very happy with it. We use it on all of our gambesons. I don't, ever since we've done that, we've never washed them. Yeah, I love that. Stuff. I mean, and seriously, this just. What about Febreze, though? For... I have seen people use Febreze. That's why they I use Febreze because they don't have access to this. Is really, I mean, Febreze will kill the smell, but isn't necessarily going to kill the microbes. Yeah. This kills the microbes, leaves an even better smell, and sure. when you put it on, it's anti-inflammatory. It's true. And it's just like we said, spiced rum. We a lot of times will throw witch we'll hazel in there. We'll leave a recipe in, yeah, the, in the we'll comments. Yeah, we'll put it in the comments, and then some essential oils. So yeah, what would be the difference in cost between the different types of materials? <clears throat> like bamboo um, and opposed to wool. These are professionally commissioned and they're 100% hand stitched. Uh, shipping was 100 euros, and I believe this was 300 and some change euros. This was 280 and some change euros before shipping. And again, these are a bit on the pricey side because not only did I request they be handmade, they're actually custom fitted as yes. well. Which is super nice. And uh, I also ordered a bunch of extra things like uh, my tie points all have brass tips on them. Um, yeah, Lots of bells and whistles that you don't really need to fight. Um, I only put them on when it's uh, picture time. Don't ask me how much that was. Yeah, <laughs> There's a reason I only did it once. I'd say around 300 is usually a pretty safe bet. 300 to 380 if uh, if you want some really good custom work. But and that will keep yeah. you safe. Uh, if you ask most fighters what's the most important uh, piece of their gear, they'll first say their helmet. Then they'll say their gauntlets, and then after that, every time, it's the gambeson. 
because when you're fighting, people are going for gaps. They're not going for your armor. So this is what's waiting for you and protecting you in those gaps. So yeah. this one that is the little bit less quality, this one was actually 240. And so, it's not a bad gambeson. Not bad. But it's just it's gonna wear a lot quicker than say this higher quality. And yeah. these ones, these both of these are actually about the same age. Correct. This one has a little bit more mileage on it in fight. This one has about the same, just with exercise and different things. I, I think that I think that about wraps it up. If you guys have any more questions, go ahead and throw them in the comments below. We'll see if we can get them answered for you. Um, this has been great. Thank you guys yeah, very much. Like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs>